Susie Orman, host of the Susie Orman Show on CNBC, best-selling author and marriage equality advocate, and Congressman Sean Patrick Maloney, the first openly gay congressman from New York. Thank you for joining me. Susie, I want to go to you first on this. I am getting an, a muscle cramp in my neck from watching Republicans twist themselves into ideological pretzels over the subject of gay marriage. That sound from John Boehner is pretty breathtaking insofar as here is the guy who has dedicated a million dollars to defending DOMA in court. And when asked about it, he doesn't actually want to defend it. What did you make of that? Here's the thing. If you ever really ask any of these people that how do they really feel about it, they then start to quote something that makes no sense on any level whatsoever. It's if God forbid they should be heard saying the words, I don't think gays deserve to be married. They put it on all these other things, Alex, and that's essentially what he did as well. What really makes me so sad is that Listen, gay people understand very well that when they get married, that is a legal, legal document. And when you get married, that means if you don't want to stay together anymore, then you are going to have to go through a serious divorce. So this thing about, oh, two and three people are going to get married, it's going to do this, it's going to do that, is just so ridiculous. It's like saying, well, you know, husband and wife, you would want two husbands, two husbands. You get married because you love one another. And I really think right now the Republicans and many of the people that are still trying to say that they're against it, they don't really know what to do because they know for once they are in the minority on this issue. They used to be in the majority. But now they're in the minority, and they're just not used to being in that particular situation. Congressman, Susie brings up a great point, which is the way my how things have changed. And as someone that serves in Congress, I want to revisit the year 1996, which is sort of when this all began. And this is the House Judiciary Committee. There is, there is this contention these days that the Republicans don't have any moral objection to gay marriage, but that is not at all outlined by the House Judiciary Committee, which... <laughs> Uh, Justice Kagan cited today in court, the text of this, of, of this report said that civil laws that permit only heterosexual marriage reflect and honor a collective moral judgment about human sexuality. This judgment entails both moral disapproval of homosexuality, so homosexuality and a moral conviction that heterosexuality better comports with traditional, traditional especially Judeo-Christian morality. If that is not a moral referendum, on the subject of gay marriage, I don't know what is. How do House Republicans walk back from that, Congressman? Well, they don't. And the fact of the matter is, is that people have always justified discrimination in moral and religious terms. It's almost a desperate attempt to justify something that is indefensible. Look, my partner and I have been together for 20 years. We have three children together. We get up every morning and get them to school and make sure the homework's done. And, you know, we just want to be a committed couple leading, leading, our, leading our lives. These people in Washington who talk as though the sky is going to fall must not have been watching as state after state has done this with little or no, no change to traditional marriage. At the end of the day, this is about people who love each other trying to enter committed relationships, and we ought to be equal under the law. My kids shouldn't be in a family that is discriminated against. It's just wrong. And... Happily, uh, a majority of Americans and a majority of Republicans under 50 agree with me. Susie, th this, this sort of brings up the question of what is the road forward and what would be the best outcome actually for the GOP, which is in such a weirdly uncomfortable position of their own making, but nonetheless, it's uncomfortable. In the Atlanta Journal-Constitution today, uh, Jay Bookman writes, Speaking in purely political terms, the best thing the Supreme Court could do for the future of the Republican Party is a, issue a sweeping ruling that gay marriage is a constitutionally protected right. By doing so, it would pretty much gut the issue as a point of political contention. Basically, the best thing for Republicans would be to become a non-issue and for everybody to acknowledge this is a basic civil right protected by the Constitution. Do you agree with that? Yeah, well, you know, personally, I don't care what's best for the Republican Party. I don't really care about them on any level when it comes to this issue. What I care about isn't Republican, Democrat. I care about every single gay person out there. I care about every single straight person out there that knows somebody who's gay and whose heart is touched by the fact that there are loving people out there and they want to be together. Personally, what I would love to see happen, obviously, is that, that DOMA is overturned. I mean, I would be even happy enough if the Supreme Court said, fine, let's go back to Prop 8. It's only legal in K-12 
California. We're only ruling for that state. And then if the states want to decide, because it is the arguments about the states that have made it, that DOMA is going to be overturned on some level. And I think then what can happen is that I think everybody, and I'm personally thinking about this, Alex, currently I am a resident of Florida. And I would be more than happy to go and move. And I have substantial wealth. I pay substantial taxes. I would be more than happy to move to New York or California if I could get married and be recognized on a federal level because I want to live in a state that validates me and I will validate them with my money. Well, uh, Susie, New York would love to have you. I'm sure Congressman <laughs> Maloney can agree to that and agree on that. Congressman, before we go, the one thing that has been really under discussed uh, as we talk about the electorate is the, the part of the electorate that's gay, and that's an estimated 5%. It may be even larger than that. President Obama won the gay vote 76% to Mitt Romney's 22%. There is a question of morals. There is a question of sort of being on the right side of history. There is also the side of the question of, of getting elected into office. One would think that Republicans would at least try and put an iron in that fire and, and, and gain some support from the gay community. This could be an opportunity for them to do that. Well, it is amazing what can happen when, when your ideology bumps up against your desire to be in power. And I think we're going to see more and more Republicans see the light on this issue. Now, I don't have that Susie Orman money, but let me tell you what. <laughs> uh, we're, you're welcome in New York, Susie. We'd love to have you. But, but you should know that as a member of the House of Representatives right now, it's going to cost me over $8,000 to insure my partner. We've been together for 20 years. But even as a member of Congress, he can't get health insurance. It's illegal under federal law. Just think about that. And if I, as a member of Congress, can be treated unequally, discriminated against by the government where I sit and vote, then what chance does uh, Edie Windsor have? Do the thousands and thousands of ordinary Americans like her who are in committed relationships and just want to be equal? We need to do better. Congressman Maloney, th that such an important thing not to lose sight of the reality of gay couples living under, uh, being, being discriminated against. Thank you so much for your time. Susie Orman, please come move to New York.